Mario Kart Wii has some ridiculous shortcuts. Grumble Volcano, Coconut Mall... For speedrunners, they're certainly no secret. I covered many of these in a video a couple of years ago. Tricks known as Ultra Shortcuts. However, since then, a revolution has taken place. Since 2019, Ultra Shortcuts in Mario Kart Wii have been discovered at a rate never before seen. Many of them are only theoretically possible, using inputs so precise they can't normally be done, but they break the game in ways unimaginable to most. This is the story of the Ultra Shortcut Revolution. So what is an Ultra Shortcut? Well, naturally it's a shortcut that skips a large portion of a track, but as you'll see in a minute, there's actually a bit more to it than that. From 2008 through 2018, courses like Mushroom Gorge, Wario's Goldmine, and DK Jungle Parkway had shortcuts discovered so players could complete them in under a minute. They were performed in a variety of ways. In Mushroom Gorge, you ride on a wall around the finish line. In Wario's Goldmine, you bounce off a pipe to the track above. And on DK Jungle Parkway, you fly high in the air and clip through a wall to the end of the track. Over the course of about a decade, massive shortcuts like these were discovered at the rate of about one per year on a variety of tracks. Slowly but surely, more and more of the game's 32 courses had Ultra Shortcuts discovered. For years, that was the state of Mario Kart Wii. And then, in 2019, a revolution began. For a multitude of reasons, Ultra Shortcuts were discovered more rapidly than ever before. They all had to do with the game's faulty checkpoint system, and to see how it works, we're going to look at one of the most broken tracks in Mario Kart Wii. This is Sherbert Land. This course is a massive loop, and obviously the programmers didn't want you to skip any significant portion of it. So, they built an intricate checkpoint system into every track to try to prevent that. On screen now is the checkpoint map for Sherbert Land. All of the blue lines represent normal checkpoints, which are used to tell Lakitu where to place you if you fall off. Those can be ignored. The green lines, on the other hand, are key checkpoints. These are the ones that really matter, and you can think of them as boxes that extend all the way until the next checkpoint. The red starting line also acts as a key checkpoint. The game wants you to drive through all of these without skipping any in order to give you credit for a lap. The way it does this is with a counter that updates as you drive through each key checkpoint. On Sherbert Land, there's 8 key checkpoints and the finish line, which counts as region 0. So as long as your counter is at region 8 when you cross the finish line, you'll get credit for the lap. The game also has a failsafe to make sure you don't skip any key checkpoint regions. The only key checkpoint regions that are loaded at any time are the region you're in, the one in front of you, and if you're in the key checkpoint box itself, the region behind you is loaded too. A region has to be loaded for your counter to update to it. So say you're here in region 1, and you try to skip ahead to region 3. Well, the only other region loaded is the one in front of you region 2, so when you drive through region 3, it won't be loaded and the game's counter won't update. And since you'll drive through the finish line with the counter at 1 instead of 8, the lap won't count. So skipping any large portion of the track isn't doable. 
Another failsafe the game has involves the finish line. If you ever go from the box right in front of the finish line to the box right behind it, the game will subtract a lap from your total. That way, you can't just go through or around the finish line to the end and complete it for a free lap. So, since you couldn't skip any key checkpoints, the only possible shortcuts seem to be small corner cutters. The game's checkpoint system did its job, but it had one flaw. One major game-breaking flaw. If you start any shortcut from key checkpoint region 0, right in front of the finish line, the key checkpoint box behind you is still loaded, region 8. So you can skip a massive portion of the track, and as long as you start it in that first box, your counter can still be updated to region 8, and the lap will count. Shortcuts that abuse this specific glitch are classified as ultra shortcuts. And sure enough, Sherbertland has one that's possible. This is the Sherbertland Ultra Shortcut. It involves doing a trick known as a wall clip. By backing up, using a mushroom, and doing a wheelie to get at least 5 frames of airtime and adjust your bike's rotational angle, you can run into the side of certain objects to clip high into the air. This has a variety of uses across the game, but back in July 2015, a player named Blaze figured out that you could wall clip off of the finish line pole and land far enough back to respawn a bit behind the finish line. You can see from the checkpoint map what's happening. You start in the box in front of the finish line, then need to land in a specific spot in this checkpoint to respawn. Then, since key checkpoint 8 is loaded, you need to turn around and go touch the box to update the game's counter before driving forward to the finish. A lap could be completed in under 20 seconds. For a few years, people took turns lowering the 3 lap world record, and by late 2017 it was a 143 by a runner named Guy. The biggest issue with the shortcut, however, was that it could only be done once per race, since the act of respawning takes your mushrooms away, which are required to get the wall clip in the first place. So if you could somehow do this ultra shortcut without respawning, then that would be huge. And it seemed like that should be possible. By angling your bike to the left more, you could make it back to the track without a respawn. But doing so would cause the lap to not count, because of yet another failsafe the game has. The 95% rule. The game actually keeps track of how much of the course you've completed when you enter each checkpoint. Or at least, the game's best estimation of how much you've completed. If it ever sees you skipping more than 95% of a track from one checkpoint to the next, it won't count the following lap. Now, the game actually isn't that great at tracking this in most cases. In courses like Grumble Volcano, for instance, where you're clearly skipping more than 95% of the track by going on the rock, the game only registers you as skipping about 83%, so the trick works. But on Sherbert Land, since you have to cross over this checkpoint to land on the track, the game thinks you went from 0% to 97%, meaning the 95% rule was not satisfied and the lap wouldn't count. For years, the 95% rule prevented the non-respawn ultra shortcut from happening. But in May 2019, a tool-assisted speedrunner known as Swear got an idea. The game's percentage of completion updates any time you enter a checkpoint. So you could drive ahead to the next checkpoint, then re-enter the first checkpoint from further ahead, at about 2% completion. Then if you manage to wall clip and land on the track while your completion percentage updated to 97%, the 95% rule would be satisfied and the lap would count. So, Swear got to work at creating a tool-assisted speedrun of Sherbertland. A tool-assisted speedrun, or a TAS, is a type of speedrun where the player uses tools like slowdown, save states, and frame by frame to create higher levels of gameplay than humans can normally perform. On May 21st, 2019, he and fellow TASers Akari, CF, Luke, and Thomas released their 3 out of 3 Sherbertland TAS with one mushroom used on each lap to just barely land on the track and have the ultra shortcut count. A run clocking in at just 35 seconds. 
So, the focus turned to doing this normally in real time, or RTA. On May 16th, Bryce managed to hit the no respawn version, but used two mushrooms in the process and could only do it once, getting a new world record of 140. Just over a month later, Taylor would improve the record to 129 by doing the two mushroom no respawn method on lap 1, then using his last mushroom to do the wall clip again and land in the water for a lap skip. This same method would be improved over the following months, down to a 116 by Arthur, which is where the record stands today. As of now, nobody has hit the one mushroom no respawn lap skip in real time even once. Arthur got pretty close in October 2020, with his front tire hitting against the edge, but he couldn't make it. So given that, doing this three times in a row like the task does seems out of the question. Right now, it looks impossible. But who knows what the future of Sherbert Land holds. These Sherbert Land developments can be considered the first major events of the Ultra Shortcut Revolution. Over the following several weeks in mid-2019, discoveries went dormant for a bit while players worked on improving various world records. But in July, seemingly out of nowhere, possibly the craziest day in Mario Kart Wii history took place. Remember how I mentioned before that Ultra Shortcuts in the past had been discovered at the rate of about one per year? Well, during these 24 hours, there wasn't a new Ultra Shortcut discovered. There were three of them. Call it a ridiculous coincidence. Call it a culmination of years of effort from the community. Whatever it was, the end result was incredible. On July 11th and 12th, new Ultra Shortcuts were revealed on N64 Bowser's Castle, Shy Guy Beach, and Koopa Cape. Bowser's Castle was first, being revealed on July 11th, and it looked quite similar to the one on Sherbert Land. This shortcut was first theorized by a tasser known as CF, and successfully tasked by Luke with help from a handful of others. It began by doing a humanly impossible trick known as Rapid Fire Hop Abuse. The game needs your bike to be on the ground for at least two frames to update its rotational angle. By alternating pressing and releasing the hop button every frame, or 30 times per second, you can ensure that your bike is only on the ground for one frame at a time, so your bike's rotational angle will never update. This can only be done in a tool-assisted speedrun. Then, once you get near this wall, you can release the rapid fire hop abuse, causing the game to quickly update your rotational angle and slam your front wheel into the ground. You'll briefly fly into the air, allowing you to get over the wall next to the finish line. By then doing a wall clip, you'll fly high in the air and down into the lava. This ultra shortcut works just like the one on Sherbert Land. These checkpoints extend out a bit into the lava, so it's possible to land in them even without making it to the road. So once again, you can land out of bounds, respawn on the course, then go back to hit the last key checkpoint and finish the lap. But ultimately, even though the shortcut was similar in structure to Sherbert Land, the rapid fire hop abuse made it TAS only. It was impossible to do this humanly. The second shortcut, on the other hand, was humanly viable but it has quite the background. The same day the N64 Bowser's Castle Ultra Shortcut was discovered, a player named Brakeson posted this gif of wall clipping off a bomb. Right away, CF realized the massive potential this had. If you could clip off a bomb right in front of the finish line and land somewhere back here, you would then be able to touch the last key checkpoint and get an extremely fast lap. The bombs in Shy Guy Beach operate on a cycle, with bombs landing and exploding at the same times in the same places each time you play. And coincidentally, right when the race begins, a bomb lands in front of the finish line, exactly where you'd want to clip off of it. So naturally, that's what the players were aiming for. But every time they tried, the bomb would explode just too soon. Luke was able to get close with the tasks, but it exploded frames too early every single time. So, CF's original task was for the second time the bomb landed there. 
but that meant waiting for over three minutes. That ruled out any hopes of beating the three lap world record, but you could still beat the single lap record. By driving to the end of the first lap, then waiting until three minutes on the timer, you could quickly start the second lap, then wall clip off the bomb to the end of the lap, and smash the fastest lap world record. And later the same day, that's what players were doing. Justin became the first player to set a world record with the Ultra Shortcut with a 20 second lap, and he chose to spend his 3 minute wait by eating an entire pack of Oreo cookies. I am eating with no milk by the way. A couple weeks later, this method would be improved in a task by EJ. By starting the clip sooner, you could clip off the back of the bomb to shave a fraction of a second. Although it was more precise, this method would ultimately be brought to RTA runs as well. The current lap record is a 16.9 by Jack Glusing, one of the most bizarre looking tricks in the game. So those were the first two shortcuts, both discovered on July 11th. They both involved wall clips, flying high into the air to skip a lap. But just a short while later, the third ultra shortcut in 24 hours was discovered. And this one was the craziest of all. Welcome to Koopa Cape. The credit for this one goes to Blaze, being revealed in a TAS on July 12th. You start by going to the halfpipe in front of the finish line, and tilting the nose of your bike down. Then you start the rapid fire hop abuse to keep your back wheel in the air as you move forward. By releasing it, you'll get slammed into the ground again and launched high in the air. The rapid fire hop abuse alone makes this humanly impossible, but in case it didn't, this next part would likely take care of that too. By angling your wheel up while in the air, you can then do a wall clip and land inside the barrier while still technically being on the track. Then you maneuver close to the finish line with extreme precision and fall off the course. When you respawn, you're behind the finish line and can finish the lap. As this trick stands right now, it's certainly not humanly viable. Getting across this gap seems to be impossible without rapid fire hop abuse, so until a way around that is figured out, no human will ever perform this outside of a TAS. So those were the three ultra shortcuts discovered in rapid succession. Including the no respawn shortcut on Sherbertland, that made it four ultra shortcuts discovered in 2019. Never before had the game seen a period of discovery like this. There had been years in the past with multiple ultra shortcuts found, but never had there been four separate ones. The next several months of 2019 came and went without any new discoveries, calming the scene for a little while. And then came 2020. Twenty nineteen may have been an incredible year for Mario Kart Wii, but twenty twenty really was the year of the Ultra Shortcut, and it all started just nine days in on N sixty four Mario Raceway. This one has to do with the wall in the center of the course. Players knew for a while that if they could somehow get inside of it, they might be able to maneuver around in it to get a lap skip. Issue was, it has a massive invisible wall that extends upward in the sky. Any attempts to get up inside of it would be blocked by this wall. But in early January 2020, a player named Jaden pointed out that a section of this wall by the mushroom extended out past the wall, and the bottom here has no hit detection. So if you could somehow go through this section of the invisible wall, you could land inside to set up a lap skip and a player named Snoop figured out how to do that in a TAS, wall clipping off of this mushroom. From there, she then had to get to the end of the lap. You essentially have to go around the rest of the course while in the wall but still touching the road. Doing this is beyond precise. You have an incredibly tight space to work with. There's a point midway through where you have to turn more than 90 degrees to the left, and a player named Charlie figured out that to turn that far, you have to go extremely slowly and do a standstill mini turbo while in the air. This tedious movement continued for a while, but Snoop eventually got to the end of the lap. She then backed across the finish line, used a mushroom, and fell off the track, 
then respawned and drove to the end for a 19 second lap. This incredibly precise portion of the shortcut was developed by Jellopuff. You have to go from this box right in front of the finish line to this box back here without touching this box between or the lap won't count. It requires a perfect angle, but it can be done. This obviously can only be used for lap runs, since the setup takes far too long, and the best known task is a 16 second lap, published by EJ but with contributions from a plethora of players. But here's the crazy part. Technically nothing here is humanly impossible. There's no rapid fire hop abuse, and that wall clip at the start can be done. Even the movement inside the wall, as insanely precise as it is, technically none of those moves are strictly humanly impossible. So will it ever be done? Conventional speedrunning logic says that anything theoretically possible will be done eventually, but it's hard to say if that applies here. Most in the Mario Kart Wii community don't see it as a humanly possible trick even though none of the moves themselves are technically impossible. Right now, it just seems a little bit out of reach. The next shortcut, on the other hand, is absolutely out of reach. This is Dry Dry Ruins. Let's start by looking at the checkpoint map. As with most of these shortcuts, the goal is simple. You go from the box in front of the finish line, out around the finish line and out of bounds, then respawn, turn to hit the last key checkpoint, and drive forward to finish the lap. The key to doing that is getting around the finish line, but here's the problem. Around the course is a massive invisible wall, highlighted here in blue. You can't get around the finish line checkpoint without getting past this wall, and it just goes up and up. So that was the big challenge figure out a way to get past the invisible wall. Blaze took it upon himself to solve it. There wasn't a way to go through the wall, but Blaze had another idea. He was gonna try to go over it. Enter the super grind. A super grind is a form of rapid fire hop abuse. You do the normal hop inputs on every other frame, but add in alternating between neutral and a direction on the control stick. This causes your horizontal speed to build up as well as changing your bike's rotational angle, so when you eject off the ramp, you get sent high in the air. By then doing a wall clip off of the rock, you go even higher and can eventually make it up over the invisible wall and out of bounds. The rapid fire hop abuse makes this impossible to do humanly, but on January 16th, Blaze managed to get a 27 second lap in a TAS. That made it two ultra shortcuts discovered in January 2020, just one month into the year, and two more tracks were already broken. The discoveries did slow down for a few months after this, as February and March came and went without any new ultra shortcuts, but in April, the third Ultra Shortcut of 2020 was revealed, and this one had been in development for a long time. This is Bowser Castle 3. To start, we have to go back to July 2019, when Justin came up with a rough idea for an Ultra Shortcut that would barely save any time. At the end of the lap, you could hop up on the wall and wall clip to cut this corner of the track. Issue was, you'd be skipping the second to last key checkpoint. Your tracker would be at 5, then wouldn't update to 6, and since region 7 isn't loaded, the lap wouldn't count. But luckily, Justin had a way around that, skipping the first key checkpoint too. This might seem counterintuitive, but think about how the checkpoint system works. By skipping region 1, the game thinks you're still in region 0, meaning the last region is loaded too. So, skipping region 6 is inconsequential since the only other region loaded is region 7, and the counter updates once you get there, allowing for a successful lap. This same idea of skipping the first checkpoint to allow for a later skip was already used on Maple Treeway, 
so it wasn't a new concept. Justin's idea for skipping the first checkpoint involved wall clipping off the finish line pole, but that ultimately wouldn't end up working. The angle you would need to approach the pole wasn't viable for a wall clip, so that idea was ruled out. The next day, Benny theorized another method. It was actually possible to wall clip off of certain blocks. You can very precisely fall off the side of these blocks then do a wall clip off of them to get launched far forward. And as Snoop figured out, this method was viable, but only if you use the Spear, the fastest bike in the game. Even with the second clip later, the lap was still slower than the non-shortcut record, since the Spear's poor drift cost too much time. The non-shortcut task to beat was 36.656, if someone could get a time under that, then this would officially be a new Ultra Shortcut. Esteloy 62 and Kirio would later prove that the first skip was possible with the Flame Runner, the bike typically best for getting fast times. That opened the door to maybe turning it into an official Ultra Shortcut, but when Akari and Monster lowered the non-shortcut task down by half a second in October, that put a bit of a damper on things. But a few months later, a group of Tassers came back. They felt that if they could just find a bit of time to save, they could make this Ultra Shortcut a reality. So they got to work. The time to beat was 35.936. On April 26th, the final task was published, a 35.743, just ahead of the non-shortcut lap record. EJ was technically the first person to beat the non-shortcut task, after finding the faster way to turn for the second skip, but the final product had contributions from Esteloy, Kirio, Malio, Marth, Monster, Rocky, and Snoop. A remarkable journey from many members in the community, culminating in a new Ultra Shortcut by the slimmest of margins, the 3rd of 2020. Now, none of these three had been done humanly, but just seeing ways that a task could break courses was amazing. Still though, there wasn't anything new where you could pick up a controller and perform it. That's what the discoveries of 2020 had been missing. But in July, an interesting development was made to an old one. Waluigi Stadium had an ultra shortcut from back in 2015. You did a massive jump up high to skip the first key checkpoint, then performed rapid fire hop abuse to clip through a zipper and skip part of the course. It was an impressive shortcut, but the rapid fire hop abuse made it task only. End of story. Right? Well, for years, players have been working to make the shortcut humanly possible. One of the earliest efforts was from a player named Sam F. His idea was to jump in the air, hit off the top of the finish line banner, and pass through an invisible wall to later in the track. This finish line banner is technically a horizontal wall, and whenever your bike contacts one, it's temporarily able to pass through all other walls. Although Sam couldn't make it to the track with his method, Using the banner for the invisible wall would be explored years later. In January 2020, Justin and Benny came up with a variant of the original task method. You'd do a mini turbo for speed, reach the top of the banner, and use it to clip through the invisible wall, all without using a mushroom. Then, upon reaching the track, rather than doing the rapid fire hop of use to clip through the zipper, you'd do this. Believe it or not, this second part of the shortcut was viable. 
It was the shroomless banner clip at the start that the community was unsure of. Even with the precision of a TAS, you'd just barely have enough speed to make it to the track. So this version was put on the back burner. But then, half a year later, Jellopuff proved that Sam's original method was possible to do in real time. The key was using the bullet bike, and using a TAS to perfect the angle and drift. Once again, nobody knew for sure if this was too precise to do humanly, but the inputs themselves weren't impossible. Players tried to do this for a few days, but ultimately nobody was able to hit it. Back to the drawing board. Until EJ came out with this method five days later. It was similar to Justin and Benny's method, but had much more leeway. You would use a mushroom to make it up to the banner, then clip to the left and have your front tire hit the dirt. By then hopping, your bike will bounce to the right, just enough to make it to the course. You could then turn around, hit the last key checkpoint, and finish the lap. Right away, people figured this would be humanly possible. The question was, who would pull it off first? Well, just three days later, that question was answered. The player's name was Logan, and he managed to time the hop perfectly and land out of bounds to get a 148 three-lap record. This was effectively the same as the task version, but he had to waste some time getting picked up rather than landing right back on the course. This record would eventually be lowered to 143 by not having to respawn, but there's still potential to take quite a bit of time off of it. It's possible to do this shortcut three times in a race, using one mushroom per lap, but given the difficulty of doing this just once, it's a bit of a long shot. There's also been attempts to hit Sam's original method, which would be faster, but nobody's been able to yet. If either of those two tricks are hit, Waluigi Stadium's record could still be crushed. But as it turns out, the improvements to old strategies weren't done. Let's take a look at Ghost Valley 2. This one is pretty small, but looks impressive. The original Ghost Valley 2 shortcut was discovered in 2009, and involved doing a wall clip off the finish line pole to skip further in the track. But six years later, this shortcut would be improved by, of course, none other than Blaze. After landing from the first wall clip, you could turn around and do a second one off of these blocks, skipping to the end of the lap. The checkpoint map shows how this works. By leaving from the finish line box, the game still thinks you're in region 0. So skipping to later in the track is no issue. As long as you go back to hit the last key checkpoint, the game thinks you drove the lap normally and counts it. The only issue with this shortcut was that it only saved a fraction of a second, since you used all your mushrooms and couldn't do a normal wall clip on the other laps. Even though the second part was humanly possible, doing it fast enough to save time was tough. For years, nobody was able to do it in a 3 lap record. But finally, in October 2020, Logan did it, beating the old record by just a tenth of a second. And to this day, nobody else has been able to pull off both wall clips in a world record speedrun. So that makes 5 ultra shortcuts or ultra shortcut improvements pulled off in 2020. These shortcuts have a wide range of human viability. Some are tricks humans can regularly perform, like Shy Guy Beach or Ghost Valley 2. Others will never be pulled off in their current state. Courses like Dry Dry Ruins have tricks that make them impossible. One of those tasks only shortcuts was N64 Bowser's Castle. I mentioned before how this trick involved rapid fire hop abuse to get over the wall. Alternating tapping the hop button on every other frame 30 times per second isn't humanly possible. So, any trick that requires this can't be done outside of a TAS. But remember what I said before? The rapid fire hop abuse made it TAS only. It was impossible to do this humanly. Was impossible. Keyword, was. In November 2020, Tasser CF came back to take another look at N64 Bowser's castle, looking for a way to bypass the rapid fire hop abuse. And sure enough, he found a way to make the Ultra Shortcut humanly possible. This 
is the barrel roll. This was a trick discovered the same year the game came out, back in 2008, but wasn't fully explored until many years later. You have to go up on a wall, then do a wheelie while you slowly fall over the edge. If done properly, your bike then enters a state where the game won't try to correct the bike's rotation as long as you stay at a low speed. Then, while in the barrel roll state, you can line yourself up with the finish line pole. By using a mushroom, the game will try to quickly correct your rotational angle. And just like with rapid fire hop abuse, this causes your bike to snap back to normal, allowing you to go over the wall and clip off the finish line pole. The end result is exactly the same as with rapid fire hop abuse. Difference is, now you don't need to button mash like a TAS. But doing this trick was still unbelievably precise. You needed to get the correct bounce, be lined up perfectly with the pole, then get a big enough clip to make it all the way to the checkpoint. Three variables that, despite technically all being possible, needed a miracle to all line up in the same run. Who was crazy enough to try to get all of that? The answer, of course, was Logan. This was the same guy who first pulled off the Waluigi Stadium shortcut outside of the TAS, and who first got the double wall clip on Ghost Valley 2. He had also gotten dozens of other records over the course of a few years, so he certainly had the skill needed to do this. But this was one of the hardest tricks ever discovered in Mario Kart Wii. These were his attempts in the winter of 2020. No way, no way, no way, come on, give it to me! No, I crossed backwards! I crossed backwards! I don't think they care about shortcuts. We, I think we just did it. I think we just did it. Oh no! How? No! I thought that was it. What? No. Turn out on this. I need a new track. Never mind. No! Oh, come on, please. One time. Oh. Come on! Logan's long grind had finally paid off. You could see the top 10 times in the world at the start of his record video. Everyone had a low 231 or 230, except for Logan. He was alone with a 220, a full 10 seconds ahead of the rest, thanks to the ultra shortcut. To this day, nobody else has been able to pull it off. As more time has passed, more old ultra shortcuts thought to be impossible have had new methods discovered. Koopa Cape is an example of this. Recently, Justin found a way to implement a barrel roll to do a wall clip and get out of bounds without needing to do rapid fire hop abuse. This setup would later be improved by EJ, but despite this, it's still unclear if it will ever be executed outside of a task. The precision needed is beyond nearly every other ultra shortcut in the game, and although players have tried, nobody has come close to hitting it yet. Now, there's still one more course we have to talk about, and you probably know which one it is. This is Rainbow Road. This shortcut's legacy is unrivaled. Rainbow Road's Ultra Shortcut is a trick that perfectly exemplifies the community's effort, and this story around it is simply incredible. It all started back in March 2016, when Tasser Esteloy62 posted a video to YouTube, Rainbow Road, New Ultra Shortcut. This video was a task where Esteloy went forward, then turned around in front of the railing. 
She then got some speed and hopped, barely balancing on the outside of the railing. By using a mushroom and performing a spin drift, where you drift to the right while holding left, she managed to spin far to the right while getting a lot of airtime to move further ahead. She then angled the nose of the bike down to get a nosedive, causing a big bounce that threw her over the edge. Finally, once she was halfway to the other side, she used a mushroom for speed and held back on the controller to fall slower. She made it across, and had just cut out almost the entire lap. Now, these inputs on their own are super tough, but the locations of the checkpoints means this is even more precise than it looks. When you move forward to go behind the railing, you leave key checkpoint 0 and enter key checkpoint 1. However, you need to ultimately leave the track from region 0 for the lap to count. So one of the hardest parts was making it back far enough to nick the corner of region 0 before flying off the edge. But if you managed to pull that off, all you needed to do was drive forward through the last key checkpoint, and the lap would count. Chaining all of these inputs together was beyond precise. For years, nobody made any real progress on pulling off Estelle's shortcut. On the TAS side of things, however, there was one possible improvement. See, Esteloy used all three of her mushrooms to make it across the track, and shortly after it was discovered that you really only needed to use two of them, one right before the spin drift, and one to provide speed to make it to the other side. Unfortunately, even using just two mushrooms meant you could only do this shortcut once per race, since you just have one mushroom left over. But what about taking it a step further? What about doing this shortcut with just one mushroom? Well, if that was possible, that would mean you could do the shortcut three times, once per lap, to finish the race in under a minute. For years, it seemed out of the question, but in late 2020, Tasser started taking a closer look at it. On November 21st, CF made a task that used one mushroom before the spin drift, then just barely made it to the track without using a second one. He did it. But the lap didn't count. The reason why was because he didn't go far enough back to enter region 0. This step was much harder than it looked. Going far enough back involves delaying when you launch off the edge as long as possible, which means your mushroom will run out faster. CF used the Quacker to help him, since it gave better bounces at the cost of a slower speed, but still wasn't able to make it far enough back. What this run did do, however, was inspire Malio to start attempts of his own. Malio is a well-known tasser of Paper Mario, Mario Kart Wii, and various other games. In late December 2020, he turned his attention to Rainbow Road, trying to become the first player to create a one mushroom task of the Ultra Shortcut. He didn't know if it was possible, so all he could do was sit down with the task and try over and over. Oh my god, this might actually happen. Holy... Holy fuck, that's so close. Oh my god. This is happening, this is happening, this is happening. Hello, Summoning Salt, how are you? Alright, now I have to make it. On December 28th, 2020, Malio proved that the One Mushroom Ultra Shortcut was possible. 
Rainbow Road's Ultra Shortcut could now be done on each lap. The course is done. Mario Kart Wii did its best to make players drive normally, but thanks to the efforts of so many in the community, it was overcome. Rainbow Road has been fully broken. But what about on the non-task side of things? This 3 out of 3 one mushroom method is considered 100% humanly impossible. Partly because of its precision, but partly because Malio briefly did rapid fire hop abuse as well. That rules out any human ever performing the Rainbow Road Ultra Shortcut three times in a race, and beating the course in under a minute. At least for now. But what about the normal Ultra Shortcut? Well, after Esteloy discovered it, this trick was assumed to be humanly impossible. Community members proclaimed that it would never be done, because the precision was way beyond other Ultra Shortcuts. Each step of the trick had its own set of insanely precise inputs that would need to be performed. For years after its discovery, few serious attempts were made at landing it. But as more and more of these other incredibly difficult and precise Ultra Shortcuts were hit, Rainbow Road's legacy just grew bigger and bigger. It became the holy grail of Mario Kart Wii shortcuts. So, by 2018, the quest for the Rainbow Road Ultra Shortcut began. One of the first serious contenders was King Alex, a player with a long career who's held numerous records over the years. He posted a video in August 2018 of some of his closest attempts. There were some nice runs, but they all either didn't have enough rotation or had too small of a bounce. They all ended in him falling well short of the track. In 2019, he did more attempts. This time, the closest ones died because he hit the out-of-bounds planes. These were close to reaching the road, but once he hit the plane, all of them stopped dead in their tracks. Still, these runs looked close enough to the task that some serious excitement was brewing in the community. By late 2019, more players were trying. In November, a player named Taylor had probably the closest call so far, making it really close to the track. But ultimately, Taylor too fell short. In April 2020, esteemed world record holder Justin had an attempt that looked extremely close. But he hadn't gone far enough back to hit Region Zero. So four years after the Ultra Shortcut was discovered, even though there had been somewhat close calls, players still weren't quite doing all they needed to do to hit it. But in November 2020, players would get some help when CF released his task with the Quacker. I mentioned before how this helped get a 3 out of 3 task since the Quacker gives bigger bounces, but this improvement would also help with the normal shortcut. A bigger bounce meant there was a higher chance of making it to the road, which did help a bit. So now, there was new life for the Rainbow Road Ultra Shortcut. More players than ever before were going for it. Each of them wanting to be the one that would go down in history as the first to pull off the most legendary shortcut in Mario Kart Wii. And on December 6th, 2020, Arthur did this. But the lap didn't count. He had just missed going back far enough to reach Region Zero. A YouTuber named Windbag4 posted a demonstration that had a green line to represent where Arthur needed to go for the lap to count. As you can see, he barely missed nicking it, so the checkpoint didn't update. This tiny distance was how close Arthur came to making history. The very next day, a player named Kor became the second person to cross the gap of Rainbow Road. But he too didn't go far enough back. It seems that he was a few pixels closer than Arthur to hitting Region Zero, but he still didn't reach it. That was two players in the same week who made it across the gap, but just couldn't get the lap to count. And a short while later, a third player made it across, happy with sugar. He too reached the other side of the road, but wasn't far enough back to get the lap skip. And unlike Arthur and Kor, Sugar would go on to repeat this feat five more times, leaving him with half a dozen skips that didn't count a lap. 
Yeah, you all see that? <laughs> it's number six. It's not a, not a lap count. Don't get too excited. That was the real hard part of this ultra shortcut. Making it across the gap was tough, but doing it from region zero? That was another story. Despite all of these close calls, none of them were able to get the lap to count. Weeks passed, 2021 began, and still nobody had pulled it off. At this point, the Rainbow Road Ultra Shortcut had stood the test of time for five years. Thousands of attempts from dozens of different players. In my first Mario Kart Wii video, I made a sincere statement. The Rainbow Road Ultra Shortcut would one day be pulled off. The only question was, who was going to be the author? Well, turns out, I was pretty close. Oh my god! Oh my god, guys! Keep that, keep that! Keep that, guys! Oh, wait, wait, wait! Wait! Guys, I did it! 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 If you enjoyed, it would mean a lot to me if you could share the video with one to two other people. It goes a long way on YouTube. Also, the pages for those who helped me make this are in a pinned comment, so check them out if you're interested. Thanks!